Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Knapp & Vote BX1062-US3. This is a pocket door lock and a brass finish, and it's considered keyed differently. So the BX1062 is a, is a lock that's used on a pocket door, okay, a, a typical pocket door that you'll have in a residential, primarily residential, perhaps even commercial application. But of course, you're going to see these mostly in residential applications uh, where you're going to install the lock such that if you attempt to open the door and the tongue is lowered or in the locked position, the door won't open. And that's exactly what this is for. This is going to be available in two finishes. Okay, you're going to have your uh, brass finish, which is just the face and really the edge of the uh, cylinder collar that's here and then chrome, a chrome type finish. Okay, You'll be able to order these keyed differently, which would be a US3 or a 26 or a US26D. If you want to order them keyed alike, the polished brass and the satin chrome are available in a keyed alike version, uh, which would add an A to the end of the part number, which basically says that they're keyed alike. So the scenario of key differently or key to like could be if you have a home and you want them all to be the same key, okay, well then order them all key to like. If you have a home and you want all of them except the master bedroom door to be key to like, order so many key to like and then the one key different. That would be an application. Or of course just all key differently if you had private spaces within a common area like you might see in a dorm room sort of setting, okay? That'd be, that, that wouldn't be... Uh, uncommon. Inserting the key rotates the tongue up and down. Just 180 degree rotation accomplishes that. That's how you lock and unlock it. You'll get two uh, original keys with this naturally. Then finally you're going to get uh, the rest of the tour is going to be a cylinder collar as I had showed you, shown earlier. And the installation of that is going to be where you're going to have simply the uh, and we'll get to the installation instructions. Once the lock is installed, this is what finishes the hole off to give it that a, a finished type of look. The other parts that you'll have other than the keys, two original keys, you'll have a strike plate, you'll have a package of screws. Okay, There are three screws total. You'll need one for the strike plate and two for the lock body. Now, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page. Pardon me. There's a link below this video to the installation instructions. Now that installation instructions link immediately will tell you the, well for, first of all it's going to tell you that the unit will work with doors from three quarter inch thick to inch and three quarter thick. Let's go over the dimensional properties of the lock body now so we can get a, a gauge as to what that looks like. An overall projection of the lock body once installed is about an inch and a half. So that means that if you're going to install it on an inch and three quarter door you're going to have that collar hang out a bit so that it looks like this. Okay, The neck of the key blank is long enough to allow it to still operate and turn correctly, but inch and three-eighths is most typical, so it's going to look far more like this when it's installed. Okay, So inch and a half projection. Diameter of the lock body itself is just shy on one inch. The height of the plate on the back side is two inch. The width of that plate is about an inch and an eighth. The outside diameter of the cylinder collar on the exterior is about an inch and an eighth. Overall thickness of that item, about a half inch. Then of course your strike, thickness of that item, it's about five sixteenths or so. Okay, with a diameter of about a thirteen sixteenths. Final thing to show you are the screws again. That one larger one will be for the strike. The two smaller ones will be to hold the lock body on. This lock is non-handed. It can be installed in either direction. Let's go over the installation instructions now. Step one is to drill the hole at the proper location and the proper size to get the lock body installed. There, uh, the manufacturer recommends 36 inch up from the bottom of the door to the center line of the prep. Uh, that's, of course, at your discretion, 36 inches, a fairly common uh, size for residential heights. If you are installing the lock in an area where you have some other lock sets installed, you might want to take an audit of the rest of the locks in terms of a height to match. If you, especially if you have a long corridor, you'd certainly want the lock height to match 
uh, as you were looking down the corridor, a line of sight so that it's all compatible. So whatever the height is, however you're measuring that, three quarter inch from the edge of the door to the center of the hole. Okay. And then they're saying that they want you to pre-drill an eighth of an inch hole in step one of the installation instructions and then fin finish that off with a one inch hole. Now I recommend that you, you certainly pre-drill the, the eighth of an inch hole because that will allow you to accurately start the one inch hole. I will generally take my eighth inch drill bit and, uh, and, and use a longer drill bit I do, uh, I use so that I can drill it pretty straight through the door. Uh, and with enough practice and times of doing this, I'll be able to drill that so straight that it would be you know, well within any sort of tolerance that the lock may have. Uh, or intolerance actually. So I'll drill my hole, either drill it halfway and then mark the other side and meet in the middle, but the point is drill an eighth of an inch pilot hole. Then come with a one inch hole saw and you're going to simply drill half of the hole on one side then go to the other side of the door and finish that off. You don't want to exit out or drill through the door and then exit out and tear the veneer out because the uh, trim around this ring is not very much. You wouldn't want to rip any veneer out. So bring that hole uh, cleanly on both sides and that would be a great way to get that hole drilled. So that's all of step one and two as a matter of fact. Step three is to insert the cylinder collar uh, into the keyed side first. That would make sense. That's just going to be pressure fit in there. Then step four is to bring the lock body, okay, attach with the two holes. And you're basically done at that point. You've got the lock body now installed. You're going to use the tongue. You're going to extend it into the locked position and you will use it as a means to mark the jam for where the strike has to occur. You'll mark the jam and then you'll install that so that there's no possibility of there being any uh, trouble of the um, tongue damaging the jam is what I'm trying to say with that. Backing up to what I had said earlier about the three quarter inch dimension, it's really going to be from the edge of the frame where you're going to install this. You won't actually measure to the back side of the door because you can't get to it. So the edge of the door that's exposed really as it meets the pocket. So let's get a little closer, a little more accurate description of what that's going to look like. So your pocket installation will look like that. Okay, you're going to want to attach that strike here. Okay, and then of course the lock body will be installed the point of the matter is you're going to need to have three quarter inch room from the face of the frame where the strike plate will be applied okay over to the uh, center line of the hole three quarter inch is going to allow you enough room to get half of the body of course three quarter inch plus the strike so if you measured from the center line of the lock body to the back side of this strike leaving a tiny margin there you're going to be about three quarters so it's not to the back side of the door or to the edge of the door it's to the exposed stop of the frame is exactly where you'll install that so anyway you'll use the tongue to mark where to locate the strike you'll pre-drill a hole and you'll install the strike down onto the stop of the frame and that will complete your installation now the name nap and vote is synonymous with all things um, sliding door uh, hardware related whether it's uh, bypass or bifold or sliding or pocket whether it's uh, you know very light material in the 20 pound range all the way up to 200 pound range and then of course they have all of the ancillary hardware that go with it not only parts bags like replacement hangers and screws and guides and things of that nature but of course locks they're going to have locks for your sliding doors for your pocket doors for your bifolding doors there is a link below this video to the manufacturers page where you can pull up not only all of the nap and vote products that we sell but a link to the manufacturer's website along with a link to that full sliding door hardware uh, catalog which I recommend that you familiarize yourself with especially if you have more than an occasional need for sliding door track and hangers and things of that nature because their catalog is incredibly approachable it's easy to understand and it's easy to navigate um, once you know the type of door bifold or bypass or whatever door type it is flip to that section
What's the door weight? Okay, flip to that section. Then immediately you're dealing with only those items that apply to what you're working on. So it's very easy and approachable, uh, easy to navigate. Finally, there's the link to the core Nap and Vote product catalog. Their name is really synonymous, more so with because sliding door uh, track and hangers and hardware is a relatively new line for them. They're most known for their ball bearing drawer slides, their standards and brackets, their pilasters and pilaster clips, and all kinds of uh, closet organization tools, and that catalog is there for your review as well. If you have any questions on the Nap and Vote BX1062-US3, pocket door lock and a brass finish keyed differently, or any other Nap and Vote product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.